Hey guys, this is Coach B with Coach B's Gaming, and today we're going to be talking about migration. Should you migrate? Should you not? What's a good state to go to? What's a bad state to go to? How should we organize that? And all the, that entails. So for those who don't know me, I'm state, or I am Tovo from State 596, as well as three states before then. I've been playing since August of 2018. Now, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please, please, please do so. It would really, really help a guy out. Now, to get started, um, obviously you're going to go to your immigration rate uh, tab, which looks just like that. It says state immigration. The first things first is you can see your immigration rating at the top, which you can see mine is over 24. And if you click the little I, it will show you exactly where that rating comes from. Now, first question is going to be, well, how many tickets do I need to migrate? It's a great question. I have a guide just right here. So, uh, this is your power on the left. And for every million power, it sometimes goes up. So, for instance, the first two million power, it's only one ticket. When you get the three, it's two tickets. Four, still two tickets. Five to six, three tickets. Seven to eight, four. Nine million to ten million is five tickets. Eleven to twelve, six. So on and so forth. That's the number of tickets that you're going to need in order to migrate. Now, the cost of migration, it's first, the first ticket is going to be uh, $5. The second ticket is going to be $20. And then everything from there on is going to be $100 for that month. And then the following month, it basically restarts. You continue buying the $5 and the $10 one. So you definitely need to take that into account when you are thinking about, can I afford to migrate, so on and so forth. The next thing is picking a state. So everybody's going to have this. It's going to say immigration group grouping, and it's going to have a number. So the top states, depending on how long your migration has been opened, uh, some of them will be closed. So our, our migration has been open for, uh, I believe, three seasons now. So we're down to where there's only three states that are closed. The re or, uh, semi-open, whatever. And the rest are completely open. Now, a couple of tips as far as picking a state. The first thing is you got to think about what language what language do I speak, and you need to go to a state that speaks typically the same language. It the states that run better are the ones who are typically from the same region or at least the same again language. If you have states that half speak Chinese, half speak English, and then you got some Japanese in there, those states are honestly a cluster. They they do not work well together. There's typically always a lot of infighting, civil war, and so on and so forth. You, so you definitely need to do your research to figure out what state pro predominantly speaks your language. So obviously, the higher up, the stronger it's going to be. So the way that I look at it, just because they're high up doesn't mean they're strong to me. So I'm going to click on, or I'm going to go to state 526, and I'm going to head to the war zone. And when you do that, the best way to scout a state is go to events at the top. And then I like to look at their launch center. When you go to the launch center and you go to official detail, you can kind of scout them out a little bit. You see, do they own their launch center? Or does a, an enemy own it? If you click on president, this little button right here shows you how populated it is. If this is green, it is bad. It means it's a dead state. Do not go there. Normally, if they're in the Silver League, a lot of times it's a dead state, even if this is gold. But it depends on how old the state is. If it's a really old state and they're silver, it's a dead state. It just has a couple big players there. If it's gold or higher, it typically is a strong state, normally. If you click on the third one, it shows you the strongest players within that uh, state. So you can see the strongest player is 219 million, which is not bad for, for my range. And then the last one, you can see the alliances. Now, me looking at this, if I was going to think about migrating from my state to theirs, I can see that they have 6 million at the top, 4 million at the second, and then almost 3 million at their third. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my state. And I'm going to go, what does mine look Whoops, sorry guys. I go, what does mine look like? And when I compare it to that state, because you obviously don't necessarily want to go to a state that's weaker than yours, Unless, of course, uh, you are the one that you're in the situation that I mentioned before where maybe you have a lot of different languages or nationalities in your your state and it's just you're not getting along. And that state is predominantly whatever language you speak. 
Um, if that's the case, then yeah, that might be the best bet tape for you. So when you go to Alliance Power for us, you can see that we have 7 million, 4 million, and 3. So we're stronger than that state. So I typically wouldn't want to go there. And then when I go to Commander uh, Power Ranking, because we looked at their biggest guy was 219, you can see that we have a lot more bigger players than they do. So I wouldn't want to go there. So from our perspective right now, just knowing what we know about our state, is we are by far the strongest English-speaking state in our region. When I say region, I mean uh, the ones who are in Season 5. Our grouping is in Season 5. So we know, like, all these guys right here are all in Season 5. And you can see where we are. We are fourth. This state right here is Korean. This state is Chinese. And this state is also Chinese. And we are English. And so we use that as a great recru recruiting tactic. That's why we have our state as Americans. If you look at the American flag, you're going to know that we speak English. So even the Europeans and people from other countries, if they speak English, they would fit in here as well. Now, the second part of it, after you've picked a few states, you obviously ho hopefully have made, threat, or made friends through Doomsday, and you've been talking, figure out who state you want to go to, so on and so forth. The next part, it's going to be organiza organization and how you migrate correctly. So what I'm showing you is our migration tab that we had before we migrated. We had different alliances from the first round of migration from three different states. So for ours it was 591, 599, and then the state we were going to is 596. We also had a, a bunch of smaller groups from different places. So what we wanted to do and what everybody should do is make sure that you have three strong alliances per state. So within 596, which is the state that they ended up going to, what they did, they reorganized their state to where everybody was in the top three or the fourth. And what we did was we made a spreadsheet and we put everybody's names. Now remember, this is a very old guy, but it still helps you out. And then we put their troop level. Are they T9? Make sure you put their base level. And then what you need to do, since you're coming out of Doomsday, your first season of Doomsday, or maybe your second, you need to go look at how many duels they participated in. And then you also need to look at their time zone. For example, maybe they have low duels, but they're asleep every time a duel comes on. So you need to definitely take that into account. So for example, my, my alliance was 520. I did it a little, di a little different than them. And I, since I was editing it, I, I changed it around a little bit, so this is not very good. So we're going to go to some other ones. You can see there's, that's our... Uh, top three alliances we were looking at. You can look at Sin. They did the kind of the same thing. Dual count. Uh, have to. And then what we did with the top leaders between my alliance, the other guys at 596 and 591, if we go, who are our best guys? We want to put our best guys that are that can be in an English or a first reset alliance, and we put them in that first alliance. Then we go, okay, now we need to get a second reset alliance, and then we put all this, the second tier in the second reset alliance. Then we took all the ones who were best at that second reset, or second uh, dual slot. So it's like the 8 o'clock uh, server time, and we all put them there. So that would be like your Indonesians, your Chinese, your Japanese, or your Europeans, or whatever. And we put them there, because obviously you're going to get more participation by doing that. Now, Eden is a completely different story. You need all different types of nationalities in there. But if you do not organize like this, it's going to be a nightmare. Now, in the first migration, you need to make sure that all of you have representation. Because there's no one state after the uh, when ver migration first opens up that can go, we're clearly the top dogs, everybody should come to us. Nobody that strong after the first one. People get strong after they go through multiple rounds of migration. For example, my state has gone through three different rounds of migration, obviously. That's why we're so strong. So, this is how you definitely should do it, making sure making sure that you have three main alliances. Make sure that each alliance has representation in R4s. Make sure that everybody's going to get along. Um, if you have any problem players, maybe you need to leave them behind. And this, the other most important thing as far as migrating, whichever there's two main things. Whichever state you go to, you need to pick the one that has the best population of the three. 
It doesn't have to be the one with the current strongest alliance. The best population is going to increase your cost score. The other thing you need to take into account is who are the biggest players. Do you have some maxed players? When I say maxed, I don't mean literally everything maxed. I mean, do they have all the best heroes? And do they have technology that's almost maxed? If you don't have any of those in all the groups that you're trying to migrate with, you might as well not migrate and find a different place because you're not going to be strong enough when you go. So you're going to be spending money to migrate to be in the exact same situation. So when you migrate, you need, in the first round, at least three max players. And then after that, it's going to be like 9, 15, so on and so forth. So the more max players, the better. Make sure, obviously, they're not an egotistical max player. Um, you, you want somebody who's a humble guy, a good guy, that's helpful. You never want to go join a state with some and max player that's just a jerk so definitely don't do that so take that into account population like I showed you do they have uh, do you have max players within all of your uh, alliances that are joining in um, have you put it in an Excel sheet separated who's going where do not migrate anywhere as a full alliance you're migrating because you're not strong enough don't go to a state with even less players that because everybody's not going to follow you and keep your alliance why migrate in the first place you need to go thinking okay I know my alliance is going to dissolve and be put into different alliances and you're going to spread out to make the state stronger don't think about I want my alliance stronger think about I want my state stronger so hopefully that helps some pretty simple tips for migration and uh, hopefully when it comes time for you to do so you can take these and Make it a little bit easier on you. So, hope you guys have a good night.